Life Beacon interviewed a number of international students from different backgrounds, with different experiences and different perspectives about university life. In this documentary, we will hear from Darren, who is currently studying in Canada, from Nadia, who is studying in South Korea, from Vidora, who is studying in the UK, and from Ola Doku, who is also studying in the UK, and finally from Razak, who is studying in France. Be sure to take note of anything that you find particularly helpful and that will help you prepare for university. Enjoy the documentary. When I started teaching myself through the animation, I, I got to a, a point where I could create my own, you know, cartoons, something funny for people to watch. So I started entering those, uh, those things I was creating into, you know, film festivals and uh, competitions and so one of the ones that I was lucky enough to be one of the winners of was the Guitar Lab Africa uh, pitch competition which uh, took me to South Africa for about a week to attend an event and so you know like it was a year after that that the organizers of that event or that competition contacted me and they were like okay so we know you taught yourself animation but then are you still interested in learning you know more and i was like yeah of course like that was the plan from the beginning i just didn't have the chance so i had to learn what i could on my own and so they they put in they kind of put in a, a good word for me uh with the school i applied i got uh, accepted and i received my uh, acceptance letter on my birthday in 2019 so that was a very good birthday gift then with not with Netflix, they they started this initiative where they were helping students from Africa, you know, with a character animation course in Goblin. So it was kind of a perfect timing for me, and so we I, I was part of the first group to receive that scholarship, and and so uh, it's this initiative by Netflix. So you don't necessarily have to like apply. There's no application process for for the scholarship. It's just if you're an African student and you happen to get into Goblin, then you're eligible. So that was how it happened for me. Yeah, so most of my education, like when I was in school, was in English, uh, following like English syllabuses. So it's, it's kind of like, it's kind of like I was a UK student, but not living in the UK. So it just felt like a natural extension of that to come to the UK to do university as well. When I was in school, um, uh, I had the option to do like either my country's version of like um, GCSEs and A-levels um, or I could choose to do like an international version which is run by Cambridge uh, exams I think uh, and I chose that one uh, so yeah I kind, it kind of ended up that I had like the perfect qualifications to come to UK university so I just kind of took the took that part. The first thing was the educational quality I would get in the UK but one thing that was very important for me was being around family so um, I always wanted to study abroad but I wasn't sure like would, should I go to the US should I go to the UK but I've got lots of family in the UK so I felt yeah that would be this would be the best environment for me to study. The major reason why I came here was because I was interested in the language. My passion for Korea first started off with the language and I, through the language, I did a lot of research about the country and I found myself really interested in the history, the history of South Korea because back home we didn't study much about Asian history, it was mostly Western, European history, African history, so there was barely anything to do with Asian studies and I was just very curious so I guess that was also one of the reasons why I, I decided to venture in Asia to begin with. The main thing was finance finances because um, Canada has like cheaper universities international university as compared to like the other places that I was looking at and then in choosing York over all my other Canadian universities, I think they offered the program that I was looking for. Yeah, I, I just chose Loughborough because it just seemed like you know, it's, it's a good university. Um, it's not in a busy city like area, so it's not going to be too expensive to live in. My first priority was definitely checking if the universities here had my major. 
and after finding the major i guess it was also about the international body that they had like did they represent their international students well the major reason why i chose bristol was because it was in the top five in engineering i don't know i've always been more of a practical kind of guy rather than theoretical i i was good at maths and stuff i didn't want to do like a maths or a physics degree or anything like that um and I had my uncles, uh, two of them are engineers as well. Uh, so it's like I've seen them work and I thought it was pretty interesting what they did. And I mean, from a young age, I've liked aircraft as well. So I just put the two together and there you go, in nautical engineering. So back in high school, I was always like the science guy. I loved math, further math, physics, chemistry. Like it was always my thing. So I knew I was always going to do engineering, but I wasn't sure what field exactly like would it be mechanical civil chemical that i love like fields in engineering so i picked the course because it was the most complete course exactly re relating to what i wanted like i said finance business and, and economics all put together in the span of four years so and it's very structured like that's that's the one thing about the course like throughout the four years you don't really get that much leeway as compared to other programs because you everything is set for you to do for the finance part, for the business part, and the economics part. So the foundation program is basically a year before the main university. Doing the foundation program really helped me because I was able to talk to different lecturers in different engineering departments and that helped me decide on mechanical engineering. So I was always going to do engineering, but my foundation program was in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, which are like the major things needed for you to do like an engineering degree. Mm. So yeah, it was like a preparation for me. Also, I'm an international. I wasn't used to like the way things are done in the UK, like the way the lecturers teach, like different mm. things. And the foundation program was very helpful in making me adapt to this new system. If I remember correctly, I actually got some help from my teachers, um, especially my English teacher, uh, on like how, what kind of language to use uh, and how to write it. I don't know what the person is like nowadays, as in what they ask you to write, but I would still say like ask your teachers for help, because um, they can help you polish it up very well. I think the best thing to do is always seeking advice from everybody from people that you know that have already been in the situation because um writing a personal statement is very challenging it's like you kind of want the right personal statement for where you're going so if it's a canadian university you have to write it for a canadian university if it's an american university it's different if it's a uk if it's to the uk it's different or anywhere else honestly australia wherever it's it's different so you have to seek advice and also seek advice from professionals. I remember I went to this one company in Ghana called PFL, I think. And um, there was one lady called Shireen, <laughs> but she helped me a lot. Like she gave me advice on all of that stuff because she's, she's like a seasoned professional in writing personal statements and helping you apply for university. So yeah, looking for a professional who already knows how the system works will help you when you are applying. So for South Korea specifically, I think when it came to the study plan, a lot of the questions I noticed stem from your, it's first stemmed from the reason why you want to come to Korea, your interest in coming to Korea, because Korea is not like a hotspot destination for a lot of students, especially back when I was coming to Korea, it wasn't yet a hotspot for a lot of students. Most students decide to go to maybe Europe or America or Canada. So a lot of the questions that they had was definitely based on your interest in coming to Korea and what potential do you have to bring to Korea and sort of also what you're looking for in the future plan. So I guess for Korea, when you are writing a study plan, you definitely, your passion has to show. The reason why you're coming here is very, very important because also getting a visa to come to Korea is not easy when you're a student. So everything needs to be honest they need to see honesty in your personal statement that you're actually really interested in coming to the country learning the um, language and also studying here so it has to be you it has to be personal it shouldn't be like 
like you're submitting like a report like it should it should be personal like that's the main thing it shouldn't be like oh yeah there are a lot of big words and also you shouldn't like try and hype yourself too much because then you're overdoing it just be you say your hobbies yeah it's, it's simple i guess Me, my own personal preference, I didn't want to like share a bathroom with like six other people. So all of those halls, I just discounted those. And out of the rest, I think I just chose the cheapest one available. Uh, so I kind of got lucky with um, accommodation actually, because when I was coming to university, I found out that there were other people that I knew from back home, like Ghana, that were also coming to university. Coming to university, I think we were four or five in total and that made it easy to speak to each other decide where we are all going to live and actually even choose roommates before ahead of applying um the other good thing is or with regards to choosing the accommodation itself is york the way residence works is you get put in a residence based on your course so say all the economics majors are all in one house all the science majors are all in one house stuff like that basically but that went into picking my accommodation and also the fact that i got um i knew people that were also coming into the university as well accommodation was one of the things i really messed up personally because i didn't look at i didn't do a lot of research but that ended up being a bad decision because i got the accommodation and i realized oh this is like 20 minutes away from university and i had no actually 30 minutes and i had to like take the bus every time which I didn't like I prefer like being 10 to 15 minutes walk away from university so that was one also two I realized like I didn't really like the food the catered food and because it was a catered accommodation there was no there were no cooking appliances appliances available at all mm. so that was it was a horrible year for me like based on distance to university and also food I would, I would say yeah do your research and think about yourself what you want so i would say i was a bit lucky as well because my sister was living here when i was coming here she was here for over a year and she had been here before and so uh it was so difficult because i had to find a place while i was in ghana and so it's it's kind of tricky i find it a bit confusing because the to be able to get the visa you should be able to have had a place you're going to stay in the country you're going to without even being there first so you just kind of have to be careful i almost got scammed uh and you know searching for an apartment and you know paying for like the uh, security deposits and so it, it, it was it was easier for me because i had my sister here who could uh, uh cross check some things for me but then it was also difficult because you have to get a, you have to get a place when you are not even in the country yet and so uh, you have to really be careful when it comes to just paying your security deposits or like the, the place that some are some some offers are just too good to be true so some, sometimes you see them and you're like yeah this is definitely a scam and so yeah it was it was tricky in that sense and and also finding something that's uh, not too far from your school you know and my school is in Paris and Paris is super expensive so then there comes uh, the cost as well you know so for me i had to settle around so i'm i'm really close to paris but i'm not inside paris and it's, it's the same thing paris is packed anyway so i'm like okay it's it's cool to be you know in the suburbs and so uh yeah it's tricky when you have to find a place before you get to the country but then if you're here uh, it's still difficult to find a place it's just you are more in control because you can visit the places and see for yourself. I mean, the big question that most people ask me is, do you stay in a university hall or do you go outside? And I would say for the first year, at least choose one of the university halls. Um, it just gives you a good introduction to the community. You get to know more people who are in the same situation as you, as in all first years or uh, new to like living alone. So you can, you know, just figure it all out together. Uh, it's a good bonding experience. Uh, and afterwards you can choose to go out uh, live in outside campus. Um, 
because that does actually turn out to be cheaper. But for the experience, I would say university accommodation first. I mean, I've always been more of an independent person, so it didn't really bother me that I was going away. But I mean, it helps that, like, you know, like, we have things like uh, WhatsApp and Messenger that you can, like, pretty much like FaceTime your parents at any time. So it doesn't really feel like you're really away from them that much. Missing family. That was the only concern, like probably being homesick. So the major concern I had was missing home. That was why, that was why like family was also important for me in my decision process of going to mm-hmm. move. Because imagine me going to, let's say, Canada, where I literally have no one. That would, that would be horrible. Uh, I think I was excited to leave home. That's the one. <laughs> but my major concern was the food if i'm being honest because i was like i'm coming out here i know i'm going to miss ghana food like i'm going to miss coco bullfruit all those things so it's like my concern was how am i going to find those things here but um coming out the funny thing about being out here is that there's always something that's close to your community more than you would think and so you come out here and Maybe there's not a Ghanaian store, but there's a Nigerian store and they sell some of the things that you have. So if you come out fresh, fresh and you ask around like people, you probably find something that's close to home. That's in terms of like the food. And that's what I did to overcome the concerns that I had, which was food, obviously. The communication with people, my French is horrible. It's still bad. I like it. I'm, I'm much better now, but when I got here, it was like basically zero. So the communication with people, you go to a shop and you need to buy something or you can't find something and you need help. And 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 it's funny over here too, it's, it's just like, there are some people who can actually speak English, but you're, you're not making any effort to speak French will make them not speak English with you. I don't know if that makes sense, but it's like, uh, if, if you need help from someone, then you have to start, to, you have to open with your broken French and just be like, okay, you don't speak really well. And then they, they can, speak their broken english with you but if you're just gonna be like uh, excuse me do you speak english they'll just be like no <laughs> it's just like so communication was uh tricky wish i knew a bit more cooking before i came because i remember for the first few months i was literally living off of like ready meals and takeouts um until i got sick of that and then started trying to cook for myself um so yeah, cooking is, I think, one of the big things you need to uh, learn. And I mean, I was lucky that I've never given myself food poisoning, but I know a lot of other people have. So yeah, you don't want to be in that situation. Uh, so yeah, you could ask your parents to like, you know, teach you how to make a few easy and quick dishes. Because um, I know like as as a first year, it kind of gets overwhelming, like trying to manage like household chores and everything along with like going to school and studying and or like hanging out with your friends and everything. So yeah, try to learn some things that are like quick and easy uh, that you can use like at any time. Uh, it'll help you a lot. It's probably prepare how, prepare myself for how competitive it is in this country. Korea is very, very, very competitive and they have the the grading system is also very strict and harsh so i think i should have prepared myself a bit more concerning what i was going to put myself through it's very competitive so you have to always be on the go there's not really much time for you to like relax because someone is doing it better so how can you compete with that person so i think that was stressful so maybe finding ways to relax and de-stress should have also been something I should have prioritized before coming into university. Again, again, I'll say I was really lucky <laughs> because of my sister. Uh, she had to do the test run for me. So basically everything she had to go through that was, uh, I wish I had done this earlier, she kind of made me do. So I didn't have too much of, uh, you know, I didn't have too many things I regretted not doing before I came because she knew exactly what I was supposed to do freshers week i missed the freshers week so i really wish i did that because there were a lot of events also there were a lot of like um there was there were a lot of opportunities for you to know like the university buildings and stuff so i really wish 
I didn't miss the freshest week because I mean that's action packed and you tend to make a lot a lot of friends. So for my case, the first two weeks there were so many activities going on. And I think that if I had not prior to coming, if I had not actually read up on what what the university has to offer in the first two weeks, I would have missed out on all of these things. Because I had people I had friends that didn't do that and they came in and they just had to sit at home for the first two weeks. So I, I didn't miss out on it, but if you don't do your research on what happens actually in the first two weeks, you might miss out on some like great activities that will help you meet other people. You go to class go home, take a break, two hours, go to the next class, those kind of things. So if you don't have your schedule right, that might, that might mess you up. Like in Facebook, you find groups, exchange groups, and you can go on those. And that's how you can even also make long-term Korean friends. Putting yourself out there in these groups would definitely help you. It was a bit different to what I was used to because, you know, in high school you have like the desk and you have like a board and stuff. This was like a massive hall with lots of students that you didn't know. So it was a bit weird in that aspect, but it was exactly what I expected it to be. The lecturer came in, taught and yeah, you leave. In terms, <laughs> in terms of writing, uh, there was plagiarization, plagiarizing, sorry, that we never knew <laughs> and yeah. or i never knew at least <laughs> growing up i didn't know that that was a thing the first week of of university actually or the first few classes of university every single class is going to teach you about plagiarization you're going to have to sign forms about it to know that um if i take this course i will not plagiarize blah 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 and all those things so that's one thing that changed my style of writing or one thing that changed my not to say i was copying or cheating before but like just the awareness of plagiarism it, it changes how you approach things and then also for writing specifically, there's different models that um, you use in university, like um, Chicago style MLS or MLA, and an APA. At least for at least for Canada, I, I know that those three there's different there's different ones, right? So knowing um, different formats, sorry. So yeah, knowing that also changed my my writing completely like i have to write in this style apa and i have to write in chicago style or yeah so that i think those two things impacted my writing or impacted how i deliver my work in the university going in they knew that coming into university you do different subjects when you're at school you do different uh maths modules or physics or whatever and they know that not everyone has studied the same things so a lot of my first year was like kind of going through A-levels again so that by the end of first year, everyone knows what they need to know for the rest of the course. Yeah, so after my third year, I took a placement year, went off and worked for uh, a company where uh, it was engineering. It was a different kind of engineering to what I was doing at university, but it was still very interesting. You get to know uh, things or skills that you don't really learn at university you know uh, like soft skills like communication networking uh, team working that sort of thing uh, and you get used to like working in a corporate environment um, and you're still a placement student so like the expectations aren't that high yeah you won't be given like very hard things to do so and even if you mess up your placement student it's not a big deal so it gives you like the opportunity to like find out what employers are looking for because now you work with one you're not just a student uh you get to know what they're looking for uh when they hire people when they hire graduates you will probably meet graduates as well while you're working there so you can ask them for their experience and you can use all the information to help you when you're looking for a job after you've graduated so in my case i i discovered something else that i didn't know i was interested in but after doing this job i was like um yeah so I so my degree was in aeronautical engineering, but the placement was in automotive engineering, which is cars um, and engines and stuff, which I wasn't interested in until I did this placement. And that's when I realized, oh, hey, here's another potential career 
uh, path that I could take. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it'll help you like either solidify the choice you've already made, as in you could go to a company that does the kind of thing that you're already studying and you will feel like, yes, I, I, I like this. Or you could uh, find something else like I did. Or it might show you that, you know, okay, maybe what you're studying isn't for you. Uh, and that's fine because now you know what doesn't work for you. So you can like do something else when it comes to like graduate job hunting time. Yes. Um, so, I mean, after I did my first year, I lived outside of campus and I got a part time job there working as um, working on the staff over there. I got up, I got employed as a community assistant that was like front desk um, helping the community I had one floor dedicated to myself I uh, had to help it's like basically like an RA but the only difference is that um, the building is like apartment style so it's off campus but we still the building still wants to implement stuff that goes on in the university just because we lease out to university students right so you want them to have that university experience but yeah okay so I was a community assistant uh, working front desk and all of that stuff to actually get promoted into like leasing and res life coordinator my position now um, I had to really work hard obviously um, know the building a lot shadow a lot of people so say I come in my shift for 11 to 4 or whatever the shift time is but outside the shift time or even during the shift time say somebody in maintenance is going out to do something i'm like okay can i tag along because i just want to learn you know so shadow the maintenance department shadow the leasing uh, manager at the time uh come out i shadowed him i shadowed uh people in admin people in finance all of that stuff so basically learning different aspects of it and just having your name in their mind basically just okay well darren is always asking me questions darren is always around darren always wants to do this always wants to do that and yeah besides just the working hard always being willing to do extra and having them know that okay you want to do extra too and then also um, the leasing manager i got really close to him and obviously i told him about the opportunity that that was open and i'm interested in get in taking it and then from that point he became like a mentor to me so he just kept on advising me showing me what needs to be done teaching me things about the job even before i got i applied for the job so yeah that was those those are some things that i did uh to help me get promoted into my position so you can take advantage of say going on your university page and finding their job posting site and just looking for a job because usually when you go out to university you want to get a job right you want to get extra income and it's harder to get employed outside because you don't really have that much experience but it's easier to get employed um in a university because obviously they're only looking for university students and they're looking for international students because they bring something else to the table and there could be so many jobs on the job posting site i mean your your studies come first always so you got to make sure that, uh, yeah, you, you got to earn money. It makes life easier. But at the same time, it's not what you're here for. You need to, like, study. Uh, so it's, like, it's on you to, like, keep that balance. And and if you're an international student, you have a limit of 20 hours uh, working anyway. 20 is, like, a good number where, yeah, you're earning a fair amount of money, but you're not spending too much time outside of your studies on that. I, I didn't always do the 20 hours that I had to because I know, yeah, yeah, I need to do some extra work this week, or maybe I've got a big deadline coming up, exams coming up, got to revise, you know. In those cases, I'll tell my boss, you know, maybe cut my hours back a little bit more, because I need to focus on something else. And uh, they're always cool about it, because they know how, I mean, towns like these where universities are, they know how students work, so <laughs> mm. they're used to it. If you stop to, like, try and understand one thing, and then when you look up again, they're, like, 10 slides ahead and you have no idea what they did. So you just kind of get into this habit of just, uh, at least I did, of like going into this sort of autopilot mode where I'm just taking notes, taking notes, taking notes. And I will worry about understanding it later on. Learn the basics of the language. 
at least if you can't learn everything on your own and you find it hard, try to learn the alphabet. You'd be surprised with how far that will take you. Don't use Google Maps here. Google Maps here will <laughs> get you lost. It's not very accurate in Korea. They have their own um, map apps called Kakao Map or Naver Map. And these are very accurate. And if you use them, you'll not get lost. I think what helped was that I always had a screenshot of the location that I needed to go to. So, and also in Korean, make sure that the location that you're going to, the address is also in Korean so that it's easier for them to see and help you get there. Just get off Netflix, get off movies, F movies, one to three movies, all those things, just put it to the side because I truly believe that that is the biggest waste of your time watching movies but it's good in your leisure time but you could use that time doing so many other things and being so much more productive like a movie takes two hours of your day it's gone you binge watch a series that's 12 hours of your day possibly gone so whereas you could be like take me for example like i was writing my a levels that's the first time that i was home and only had to go to you know go to school to write my exam but in between the exams i wasn't studying and i know a lot of people probably doing this too you won't be studying you just be home watching a movie watching a movie watching a movie pick up the book study two hours and go and write your exam you pass obviously but you've just wasted six hours which you could have actually been studying and done exceptionally well and that gets into the habit of putting the movies aside and those things we just free up so much time for other things like learning how to invest learning how markets work reading a book actually finding your passion all of these things like it's a lot to life and if i think that movies are the biggest distraction so <laughs> that's my advice so venture out there's so much to do in korea if you're going to a smaller city or even a village you're not used to seeing foreigners, so maybe people might stare at you a bit longer than you expect, but try to understand that they are just curious about you. They're curious about where you're from. And a lot of times you find Koreans coming up to you and asking, where are you from? Because they're curious. So please be open-minded and understand that depending on where you are, people will be more curious about you. So try not to feel very insecure when you come here and you find people staring at you. It's, it's just out of curiosity. I think university is not only a place where you go to gather knowledge, but also learn different perspective and different lifestyle, knowing about other cultures. And I don't think I would have been able to learn about so many other cultures if I wasn't put in this situation. Because as I said, I met people from so many other, even countries that I didn't even know existed. I met so many people from all over the world and I listened to their stories and during class, like. When the teachers would teach, they had there's always new perspective to things. And I think that was very interesting for me to be in class. It's not too much of what I actually did in university in terms of my program. But then the good thing about going to university is that university encompasses a lot of other aspects like say social studies, humanities, um, all these electives as you call it in university, they really they give you a full grasp on things that actually happen in life. And now that I'm in my position, although I'm not using finance and economic, I'm using economics to an extent, but although I'm not using finance mainly, um, I'm still using elements that I learned in university, like how to relate to, to people well, how to, um, things like even equality or um, inclusivity, all those things, right? You learn all these things in university. Whereas, sorry to bash, but um, college differently. I know college is more specific, right? So you go in for like a two year program, only doing the one thing. If you come out and you only have knowledge on the one thing, you may be found lacking because you're too specialized. Whereas university gives you some kind of, you're broad to an extent, so you can explore other options when you come out.